Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Com, and I want to take a look at how the Sony a7 III did as it pertains to autofocus when I was shooting doom buggies. Now let me set up the situation for you real quick. I set the camera to the full auto mode as it pertains to autofocus, meaning the camera is going to take the 639 focusing points and try to acquire the subject whenever it shows up in the frame. Now the doom buggies were coming up over a blind hill, meaning I don't see them until they're jumping off the hill and that's when the camera will take over and use the autofocus to the best of its ability and I want to show you those pictures in just a second. If you haven't downloaded My Gear Vault yet, it's the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear for iOS and Android. Download it right now at mygearvault.com because it's free. Check it out. Now let's take a look. Here are the, the first Doom Buggy shot. Now this is the first time that the camera will start to see the doom buggy. Now it's when it's coming over the hill to start jumping. You can see that it looks like, where did I, it's already off the ground. The front wheels are already off the ground and the focus hit. Now keep in mind, these are all JPEG files because I can't open the RAWs just yet until Adobe updates their software, allowing me to do so. That's why the full real world re review won't be out until that is done. But I just wanna show you these 23 photos that I took in a row, by the way. Oh yeah, by the way, I shot 23 in a row. They were raw plus JPEG fine, and we're talking about 14-bit uncompressed RAW and JPEG fine. I actually did outrun the buffer at the very end, but keep in mind, I'm shooting those two full res images, those two full ref res files getting written to both cards. So normally, you're not gonna outrun the, the buffer if you're just shooting straight up RAW, or if you're, of course, if you're shooting JPEG, you're probably never outrunning the buffer. Uh, so here it is. So let's just zoom in here and go through this. That's in focus, and it's at 2.8, by the way, as well. So it has to find it and nail it where it needs to go. The second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth, seventh, eighth is still good, ninth is good, tenth is good, eleventh is good, Oop, where are we? Twelfth is good, thirteen. And 14th is out. So you can see that the 14th one, the focus missed on it. 15th, focus missed. 16th, I think it's in between. 17th, actually, is it in on the face? It's somewhere. Because as it's getting closer, of course, the front hood of the car is going to go out of focus more. So it looks like the subject is in focus because I can read the helmet perfectly. And I'm still going, still focused, still focused focused, and then the last one right here, definitely still focused. So as you can see, it missed a handful, not even, not even a handful, two or three, and the third one's questionable whether it hit or not. Uh, so it's pretty amazing to see that the focus with the 639 focusing points can acquire even a blind subject coming up over a hill, acquire it fast, and track it all the way down the hill as I'm zooming and moving and doing all the, and shooting at the same time. So in that test, it did really well. And so a lot of people always wanna know is how is the autofocus tracking? And for me, outside shooting at 2.8, shooting this action, shooting the high speed, shooting the movement, it seemed to do pretty well. So that's a, a vote of confidence right there. Of course, I'm not comparing it next to any other cameras. It would be interesting to sit there and take the time to compare it to a Nikon D5 or a D850. It's a really good test. I don't know which would do better, but the 639 focusing points are pretty cool. And watching them move around in the frame, and I'm not doing anything other than focusing on composition and shooting really helps. Now, I don't normally shoot on those full autofocus modes in terms of letting the camera pick the focusing point. But in a subject like this where I won't be able to acquire it because I don't know where it's going to happen, I wanted to see how the camera did, and I think it did really well. Now, let me give you a sneak peek of a couple of other things. You did see this on Instagram. My Instagram's Jared Poland, by the way, if you haven't checked it out. Um, I'm going to quickly go through this. That's focused right on the eye, which is a good thing because with all these water droplets going around, sometimes autofocus systems can be thrown off. Now, I will say this, wait till the full real world review comes out. You're going to see some great video and some great photos in there. And of course, some information about the camera. But what really was awesome when I was shooting the waterfally pictures was the fact that the, the face detect, I could see that green box would find the face and stay on the face. Even when I was trying to hit the IAF button, because I was too far away with the 70 to 200, it didn't find the eye. 
but it acquired the face, which is what matters because I'm not super tight. So if the face is in focus, the eye is going to be in focus from a distance of where I was at. And so having that box show up in the face and stay there in continuous focus is so helpful. That is something that I would love to see in my Nikons or in the Canons. But the, the, ability, the EVF for shooting for the most part is still hands down one of the greatest things in the world because I don't need the chimp. Why do I need the chimp to see if I got the exposure right or if I got the picture if I'm looking at it right in the viewfinder? If my exposure is already right on, I could just focus on one less thing, which is let's just take pictures and then I can check to see if I got what I needed and in focus later, not too later because I want to check to make sure I didn't miss it. But I want to go through this real quick. Here's the guy after he takes his shirt off. But with all of the water falling, to still nail the face is, is awesome. This one too, out of focus stuff right here. You can see the shot right there, boom. And then I'll show you this one last one with the subject right here. Still nailed the face right there. Now I did find one issue in this wide shot that I took at 102 millimeters with the 70 to 200. Now I don't know if this is just because it's the JPEG and it's some kind of processing going on, but over on the edge of the frame it looks absolutely atrocious. But here in the middle of the frame it looks fine. She's in focus, they, these guys are in focus, and it's still at 2.8. Now this is something I should have shot at 5.6 or 6.3, but it was happening so fast that I saw it that I didn't do it. I didn't shoot it at that high because I just didn't react that quick. Um, so anyway, you've got that over on the edge, but then I have another shot and I wanted to check the edge because this happened a little later and it doesn't look as bad, but that's got to be the JPEG that's going on right there doing some kind of compression um, that's happening. So we'll take a look at the raw file when I get them um, able to open them in Lightroom, but that's pretty much it. I'm pretty pleased with the autofocus capability of the camera. I really can't pass full judgment on how this camera handled or how the files looked until I can see the raw files. But I wanted to share with you 23 shots in a row where it only missed two to three images going through the entire 23 shot segment of a car that's jumping at you. One of the hardest things for cameras to do is to get the autofocus of something coming towards you. And in this case, literally blind shooting, meaning it's coming up over the ridge, then the camera acquires it, the autofocus, and then it continues to follow it as it's coming down the mountain as it lands and goes down the sand. Pretty good, and all of that at 2.8. So, so far so good there. Yeah, I'll get the raw files later when we do that rest of the stuff. If you haven't downloaded My Gear Vault, go to mygearvault.com right now. And if you haven't checked out my podcast, my daily podcast, where I'm doing the daily fro, go to fronosphoto.com slash podcast to check out the latest episodes. I've done 37 of them in a row, 37 days in a row. They're anywhere between 8 and 18 minutes, and they're pretty good look. It's like a journal of what's going on in my day. There's photo stuff. There's personal stuff. It's really cool. So check it out right now wherever podcasts are available. And that's where I'll leave it. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. To check out another video with the a7 III, go ahead and click up on the screen right now or click the other one to check out another cool video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And follow me on Instagram at Jared Poland. Thanks.